I want to help people create third-person adventure games, or any kind of adventure game, in Unreal. And the more I look into it, the easier it gets to create adventure games in Unreal. I'm going to put together a big series of tutorials, but there's one particular tutorial I want to get out into the world as fast as possible, and that is how to do gameplay integrated cinematics. If you're in this kind of third person adventure game and you want to have cinematics, putting them together is going to have to be easy, fast, and fluid because it's going to be such an important part of the experience. For example, what if we want to look through that window there? We can have a cinematic that automatically plays and helps us look in through the window. Now, how did I make that happen? Well, that part's pretty easy and there's dozens of tutorials about it. All I did is I have a cinematic right here and it's got a cinematic camera in it. And I move the cinematic camera around and whenever you play a sequence, a level sequence, if it's got a camera in it, you automatically snap to that camera. So you don't have to do any extra work. You can do some extra work if you want to have a nice smooth transition, but in this case, that's not a priority. So we just use it as it is and we have a nice camera cut. To actually play the cinematic, I just use the level blueprint. There's obviously many ways to do this, but all I have is a trigger volume. And then I went into the level blueprint right here and I said, here, the trigger volume. When you've got something selected and you go into the level blueprint, you can add in all sorts of events like this. And so I added in a play. Play this test sequence I created. That's all I did. Nothing else to it, right? But you might have noticed that when we did that, our character just kind of continued to be their character. Like we can walk around and do random stuff. We could even walk out of the trigger volume and back in and trigger it again. What we really want is to be able to show our character doing something. For example, jumping up and looking through the window. Now, one way to do that is to specify all sorts of uh, animations and stuff. But in order to make this easy, what we really want to do is we really want to allow the devs to use a control rig. Control rigs make it very easy to do all sorts of animations right here in the level. But the problem is if you add a control rig to the level, that control rig is not a player character. It's a separate character. These over here, for example, if we take a peek, there's a control rig. That's not me. There's a, that, that's just another character. It's not even a control rig. So we've got a bunch of control rigs floating around this area, and they're obviously not my character. They're different objects. But there is a very easy way to get access to a control rig. So the first part of this puzzle is that you have to use an auto-possess character. That means that the character exists in the level when you're building the level. If you look over here, this is what it looks like. Auto possess player, player zero. That will mean that when the player enters this level, they inhabit that body. They don't automatically spawn a new pawn or anything like that. They just zoop straight into that character. The reason that's important is because we can click on this character and add them to cinematics. So if we come over here into the cinematic, we can open it up. We don't want to move that around. Just uh, um, turn off auto keying for a minute there. We can open it up, we can select this character here, and then we can say add track, add that character. And so now we have this Kate character right here in our cinematic, and we can add in all sorts of tracks for her, for example, a transform. So you can see how we keep snapping to the cinematic camera. If that's bothering you, uh, we can just detach it from the viewport. That'll help. So when we add in a transform track, we can go ahead and create where our character is standing. Now, this is something that you may have already done if you've used cinematics for characters before. So we can turn keying back on and just move her over to where she's likely to be, like so. And then we can just add in a key and then auto key her over to the window and then auto key her bouncing up like this, right? And normally what you do is you'd add in animations and stuff like that uh, to try and get that to 
you know, actually look like she's doing something. But we don't want to use animations. We want to use a control rig. I want a control rig. So here's the secret that is very hard to track down, and there's no tutorials about. There's your control rigs. Boom. We now have a full control rig for Kate. This means that we can add in whatever sort of motions and movements we want on the control rig. So for example, we can grab her shoulders and bring them down so that she's not got herself in a T-pose. And obviously this can also involve animations. You can use an animation and then modify it with the control rig. Uh, so you could have like a jump animation already built and then just move her hands into the right place, all sorts of stuff like that. And as we move around, we can see how she's like, whoop, so we could add in some flair here if we wanted to. At the moment, the only flair I'm going to add in, because we are in a tutorial and I don't want to waste everybody's time, I'm going to bring her hands up so she's gripping this, um, this windowsill. Just because that will at least sell it a little bit. And maybe we'll have her feet kick out. Just so that we have, uh, you know, a little bit of life to her character. There we go. So now we have a control rig in a level sequence that's bound to our actual player controlled character. So that means when we close this sequence before we hit play, always close your sequences before you hit play or you're going to see the sequence because it thinks you want to see the sequence. When we hit play, it doesn't play instantly because it only happens when we trigger it. And then when we trigger it, there we see, no problem. Now obviously it needs a lot of work in terms of where the animations are and where the camera is relative to her big head. But you can see how that immediately allows us to control the player character with an animation. It also prevents the player controlled character from, say, walking off and re triggering things. I have a little bit of control, but not much. So, this is a great way for us to add just whatever cinematics we want using a control rig which is way, way easier than trying to create an animation in Blender and then bake it to a file and then put it into Unreal and then see whether that works for this particular windowsill. Just use a control rig. Easy as pie. Have a good one.